I work in sewage management, and it is about as luxurious as it sounds. I deal with shit all day, literally. It pays the bills, I suppose. I'm relatively new in the field, only having worked in it for the past couple of weeks. Lots of the older guys like to pick on me, calling me green around the gills or a little too mannish for a girl. Normally, I respond with a nice big middle finger. I fit in immediately, but I suppose that's true. I helped my grandpa on the farm when I was a little girl. I worked under the table when I was 16, helping fill pillows down at the local textile factory. Once the COVID-19 crisis struck, I looked into other, more essential jobs. As it turns out, many people will raise cane over human waste flooding their bathrooms before they'll worry about anything else. That's not all we do. It is mostly your run-of-the-mill maintenance work. If you know Lefty Lucy, Righty Tidy, you'll do fine. It wasn't long until I heard rumors of the Fingers Man that lives in the tunnels under the streets and beneath our feet. No, I won't be telling you what city I work in. Gordy, one of the burly foremen that supervised teams, was the first person I ever heard tell tell about the Fingers Man. It was lunchtime, and we all sat on the side of the road, hidden from passerby behind the work truck while munching on packed sandwiches and balancing on busted plastic milk crates. The sun was still high in the sky, but the truck's shadow rebuffed some of the heat. There were four of us, me, Gordy, John, and Joaquin shot the shit while guffawing through hunks of food. You see anything down there yet? Asked Gordy while looking at me. I shook my head while nibbling into a juicy tomato that hung over the bread. Just rats. Rats are the least of your worries, you know. I raised an eyebrow at him while he tossed his empty sandwich bag into the cooler between his legs. I'd yet to see this kind of attitude pour out of him. Most of the time, Gordy could be described as a jolly old soul. Always cheery, always patting the belly beneath his beard that led down towards his belt, like a cartoon dwarf come to life. John and Joaquin both sat quietly. No laugh could be heard, only the zooming of cars passing by on the road. You never seen anyone else down there? This was strange. I was sure it was some kind of prank. They were hazing me, I was sure. Like the boogeyman, I wiggled my fingers at him, mimicking a ghost. He coughed into his hand. <clears throat> mm, yeah, something like that. Sure, I guess you could call him that if you'd like. Him? I asked. The fingers man. The fingers man? I cracked a grin. He normally shows up when you're alone. Bullshit. Joaquin jumped in. He's telling the truth, you know. I looked at the three men sitting in the circle with me, all dead serious faces looking back. Apparently both John and Joaquin both lost their appetites because they put away their unfinished lunches, John lighting a cigarette. Now I've seen him. He moves so fast sometimes. You're not even sure he was there at all. <sighs> Must live on the rats in the waste down there. He grimaced at the thought of this and flicked the ash from the tip of his cigarette. Gordy brushed his beard with an open palm. For real. It's wild, I know. You'll be focused on a burst pipe, or looking for a spot to step on without getting the piss in your boot, and then BAM, he's there. I went all doe-eyed. Oh really? Well I hope that one of you big strong boys will be there to rescue me if he ever comes for little old me, then laughed at the bunch of them. 
Gordy grinned at me, shaking his head. He stood, tossed the empty belt curtain he was sitting on back into the truck, stepped over to me and said, Back to work, Stacy. Later that night, I found it hard to use the toilet in my apartment. I kept staring into the bottom of it, wondering whether or not I would see fingers poking out from the bowl, beckoning me to take a seat. I was being ridiculous, I knew that. Still, I hovered without touching the porcelain while urinating. I made my boyfriend spoon me all night, but I could not sleep a wink. The next day, I was called in on my day off. I hopped in the shower, rode up to the station, and geared up. It was a simple repair job, so I went out alone with Gordy, still rubbing my exhausted eyes while he drove. Apparently one of the pipes had sprung a small leak that could turn into something worse if left unattended. I had to go down, apply the sealant, wait for it to dry, then I'd have the rest of the day to myself. Easy peasy. I donned my headlamp and belt while Gordy set up plastic cones and removed the manhole. The entry point was in an alleyway, so Gordy would stay above ground and keep a lookout. Very much not OSHA approved, I'm sure. I moved down the ladder while clicking the light on my forehead. Once I reached the walkway, I looked around. There was the familiar sound of dripping known fluids and the echoing sound of my own footfalls. It came second nature to slip on my ventilator and goggles. Should have done that before. The stench was cringe-inducing and flooded into my lungs. Well, I'll be smelling that into the next life. The walkie came alive on my hip with Gordy's voice. Look alive down there? I know you thought I was kidding, but you see him, you come right back up. I pulled the walkie up to my ventilator and blew the loudest raspberry into the mic, then put it back onto my hip. Hazing the new blood. I'd seen that happen before in plenty of social circles. But at a certain point, they'd have to drop the act. I found the leak quickly enough. Without much ado, I got to work, kneeling down and applying the sealant from its spray canister. I had to be careful so as to not get any on me. That stuff is nasty. The sealant made quick work of the leak. I waited patiently for it to dry, maybe ten minutes, then applied another coat. There was something like the sound of a rock falling further down the sewage tunnel. I turned my head and my light followed. He stood there, at the end of the tunnel, where it split off in opposite directions. His eyes glowed yellow, like a cat's in the light. He had his back turned towards me, but his head was tucked in between his legs, and he stared at me with his head next to his misshapen genitalia. Long, dark hair flowed down to his ankles. Do you get it? Gordy's voice chattered through the walkie. I didn't touch the walkie. We stared at each other for a moment in that dark tunnel. I swallowed dry so hard I could feel my jawbone click into place. He leapt onto my walkway, maintaining his strange stance still watching me through his legs. Nothing but the sound of the sewage sludging by in the bottom of the tunnel. I could not move. I urged my legs to take me away. They wouldn't. Stacy, full disclosure. You're freaking me out, girl. I could hear apparent panic coming from the walkie. I don't know when he got so close to me. But there he was. He was maybe a foot from me, and I could see him clearly, now more than ever. The skin was covered in lesions and scarring. The hands expanded out over his arched and twisted back, 
The fingers stood out against the darkness like massive wings. The fingers stretched out at least three feet each. God damn it, Stacy. I'm coming down. Said Gordy through the walkie. Without my permission, my hand grabbed the canister of sealant. I sprayed the demon thing squarely in his glowing eyes. No reaction. The fresh coat of sealant dripped from his upside-down face. He stayed in place. His fingers were bending towards me. He was going to grab me whole. I began stepping backwards slowly, expecting that he would lunge at me at any moment. He never did. His fingers bobbed, still coming towards me. I walked backward towards the entry point, never taking my eyes off him. I climbed the ladder, always maintaining eye contact as I moved. As I lost sight of him and pulled myself to the surface, I saw him wiggling his fingers at me like a spooky ghost. That's the boogeyman. We closed the manhole. I was in shock. Gordy grabbed me by the shoulders and shook me. Stacy, are you alright? Did you see him? He sputtered this out with his face turning beet red. Take me home, I said. Every time I'm alone in the bathroom, I see a long finger that breaches the surface of the water, beckoning for me to take a seat. I think he's hungry. I won't feed him. Please leave your message 